Gotcha. Hello everyone and welcome to another Monster Hunter World video. Today I'm going to be giving you 10 tips for fighting Behemoth, or you can call them 10 PSAs if you'd like to. Basically, he's been out for about 4 days and really everyone's starting to figure him out. So all of the good tips and all of the good strategies are really starting to emerge and so of course, I want to share those with you. I'm going to start the list out with the most important tip and that is to mount the Behemoth and not attack him when you mount him. Just don't down him. Uh, anytime he tries to shake you off, just jump to a different part of his body, but don't attack him while you're on him, okay? And while you're on top of him, your teammates are going to get to keep attacking him, and he's not going to use his normal moves, so he's going to be a lot less dangerous. This tactic is extremely effective in the later stages of the fight, and it's now what I'm recommending for you to use in order to beat Behemoth when he's in Stage 3 and Stage 4, especially Stage 4. So in my previous video where I did five tips, I told you to save all of the ailments for stage four and stage three, and that's still kind of true. I would save paralysis, I would save KO, and I would save mounting all for the last stages. However, I've changed my mind about one of them. What I'm recommending now is that you put him to sleep in stage one under the falling boulders. We all know there's two falling boulders, and if you put him to sleep and then wake him up with the falling boulder, it actually deals double damage for a whopping 3,400 damage. Tip number three is a little bit more of an exploit, but I know you guys will appreciate it anyways. When you're playing with randoms, a lot of the danger comes right in stage four. You can make it all the way to the end and he begins his ecliptic meteor. And you can be in a situation where there's no comets left to get behind or somebody is incapacitated and you know you're going to lose because he's going to knock out more than one person on the team and you just don't have enough lives for that. Well, one of the tricks you can actually use is to disconnect from your internet and what happens is all of the other players will be sent to their own world right or you'll just be disconnected from them and then you'll no longer lose the match just because one of them was out of place for the ecliptic meteor so tip number three disconnect your internet in stage four during the ecliptic meteor Tip number four. So in my original video, I told you to bring a Stira Jerky in order to deal with bleed ailments, right? Well, here's some other things you probably should consider bringing. Bring 10 blue mushrooms and 10 god bugs, and this actually allows you to craft life powder in the middle of the fight. So basically, you should bring all the life powder you can, and then you should bring all the ingredients you need to craft more life powder. It's one of the best ways to keep your team alive, whether or not you have the wide range skill. You can also bring more flash bugs in order to make flash pots. Tip number five is actually very easy, but I'm surprised by the number of people who aren't aware of it. If you go to the supply box at the beginning of the match, there is a free max potion in there for you. Be sure you only take one because everyone on your team deserves to have one. Don't be greedy. There's no reason to be greedy. So take that one, keep it with you, and it'll save you from using your own max potions. Tip number six is for the tank in the parties. So one of the struggles with being the party's tank is being able to draw his aggro because he moves his head around so much and because he's kind of higher up off the ground. You can still struggle to reach him even with the lance. Well, one of the good strategies for getting his enmity is if he drops dragon pods, go ahead and pick that up and shoot him in the head with it. It draws his enmity very quickly. Tip number seven, well, we kind of need to talk about the flash pods. A lot of people like to use the flash pods to cancel his tornado, but here's the problem. If you have a dedicated tank on your team, every time you're flashing the behemoth, you're actually resetting his aggression, his enmity, right? You don't really want to do that because you're making your tank inefficient. If he's targeted you with his tornado, you have plenty of time to run to the edge of the room and have the tornado spawn in the edge of the room. I already gave that tip in the previous video, but yeah, I didn't mention that thing about the flash pods. I actually encouraged people to use flash pods. Now, I don't think I'm necessarily encouraging them. There is one other part to this though, talking about the flash pods. If you accidentally drew the behemoth's enmity, you can actually then use a flash pod to cancel that and give your tank another chance to draw the enmity. 
Tip number eight is kind of obvious, but I hear people are having a lot of trouble with this with randoms, with random teammates. It's if, when you're fighting the behemoth, you're only gonna get four comets. I, I've heard a lot of people say you get four comets. You need those comets to stand behind for when he drops the ecliptic meteor. So if he's dropping the comets, you kind of got to draw him away from those. Don't just fight on top of them. And everybody's kind of responsible for doing that. You all have to move over away from the comets until ecliptic meteor comes down and then you sheath your weapon and you run behind them. So if you've got comets breaking, the problem is you're fighting too close to them. Following that tip up, if all four of the comets break, there's actually a solution to this. What you do is everybody actually has to leave the area. You can go back to the camp if you want. All four people have to leave. And the behemoth will actually regen health, which, you know, normally that would be really bothersome. But what it's going to do here is, so if he's broken all four comets, you know you have no chance of surviving Ecliptic Meteor. When he gets his health back and you come back into the fight, he'll actually drop a few more comets before calling down the Ecliptic Meteor because he had more health. Okay, so that little mechanic allows you to fix that problem with all of the smashed comets. And the last tip is kind of a plug for one of my other videos. If you're having a lot of trouble with the behemoth and you're getting fed up and you really want to fight him, consider learning how to use the cluster bombs. Right now, Capcom has not nerfed the cluster bombs, though I, I am wondering if they ever will do that. They're really powerful, they're very effective. People are soloing the behemoth with the cluster bombs in 10 minutes. I have a guide for it. I'll leave a link in the description and I'll leave a link in the comment section. I think it's the most overpowered thing in the game, right? now so if you're really struggling and you want to be able to defeat the behemoth then honestly just about any monster in the game go learn how to use the cluster bombs all right and that is all 10 of my tips i want to thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time